Where does mercy come from? From, from God. It comes from God, right? Yeah, it's an attribute yeah. of God. Yeah. Is God loving? Yeah. Okay, so he must be love. He's not love, he's loving. So there's something separate no, from he God. he is love. The Bible no, says exactly. he is love. Okay. Did God create love? I'm not, no, I don't think so. Okay, so he must be love then, mustn't he? He's, he's not love, he's loving. Come on, guys. you see how this is difficult, right? No, no. Right. It's we can say that God is love, and we can say that's an inherent part of his nature. We have no problem with that. Because if God wasn't loving before he made creation, then that means there was a time when God wasn't loving, which is, which is obscene, right? I hope you would agree with that. Yeah. Right, okay, so he must have been loving. Yeah. Okay, now you don't believe in multiple gods, right? No. Right, so that love must be a part of his inherent nature or yeah. character. Yeah. Because if it isn't, then there are two things. Allah and this thing called love that Allah refers yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, I said yes. So okay, so Allah is love. <laughs> you can't no, say no. it because your religion doesn't permit you to say it. Whatever questions you have or anything. So, for, for example, uh, I said in terms the of video, the, gospel, the, the way they contradict each other. The, the various accounts. What do you mean by that? Well, they contradict each other in terms of in the same story. How, how something they tell totally different stories. Not totally, they tell the same story. They tell the they same story. Each other. So they have the same message. They tell the same story, but they okay. contradict each other, which I think, which could mean that they kind of take it from the source. If a book contradicts, does that mean it's not from our love or not from God? No, it means it's not reliable. It's not reliable? Yeah. So if I showed you a contradiction in the Quran, it would mean that you We're shouldn't really trust it. Right, okay. So, so first of all, if you go by that standard, you're going to bury the Quran. But let's just go otherwise. No, I, the, I don't have a problem with... Uh, what do Muslims say about the Quran? Do they say it's a human written uh, revelation, which was inspired by God? Or do they say it was on an eternal tablet that came down through Jibreel to Muhammad? Uh, they, say, uh, they say it's, the, it's apart from the speech of Allah, which he spoke at okay. some point. Oh, so it's not eternal? No. Okay, I so know Muslims say that, but it's you, not you know you're, you're outside the fold of Orthodox Sunni Islam when you no, say that. I'm, I'm a, uh, the Salafist, that's the standpoint. Of the no, 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 no. The Mutazilite, they will be the people that would say no, that the Quran is. The said the Quran is created. Yep. What the Salafists say is the speech of the attributes is eternal. And what is the Quran is part of the speech, which was spoken at some point and revealed to the Prophet the people. They, the, 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 the Does Allah have an eternal word? What do you mean? As, as an attribute, is sure. attribute of speech is eternal. Right, and is that the Quran? Is the Quran that thing? No. No, it's not. The Quran is part of his speech. So is there an eternal tablet with the Quran written on it? There's an eternal tablet with everything on it. Okay, all the words, not just the Quran, the Injil, the Torah, things. Okay. Right, so in which case, there is, there is something which is eternal, distinct from Allah. Yes? You could say so. Right, okay. You have no problem with that? No. Because he created it. Well, if it's eternal, you didn't create it. Well, Remember? I'm, 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 I'm not sure about the technicalities. However. Okay, so 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 you took a theory, a, a theory uh, belief, a kida. They will tell you it's not creative. They say it's eternal. It's not great. I'm not sure. Okay, well, w when you go home, study study what the main Sunni Orthodox Akida is, and I promise you, the, the question of whether the Quran is created or uncreated is a very uh, uh, sensitive topic. Right? Yes. Well, it's uncreated. That's not, that's the not Quran controversial. is uncreated. Yes, right, so the, the, the tablet on which it is on, uh, also the engineer Torah, must also therefore be uncreated. Uh, that's uh, logical. That follows. No. No. Why, 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 why is the Quran uncreated, but the tablet with the Quran is on, not, uncre uh, not uncreated? That doesn't make sense, friend. You, you said the Quran is uncreated, yes? Yes. Then I said, okay, so that must mean the eternal tablet that it is on is also uncreated. The material. The material, right? So you believe that, okay, so the tablet was created. I'm not saying the tablet was created because I'm, I'm not really versed on the, the whole the tablet. Uh, I know it's eternal. Okay, so no Sunni idea. Orthodox belief is that it's eternal. The tablet. The, the tablet, yeah. Could be. The okay. material. The, yeah, the very, well, whatever this tablet is, so, it, but you're, you're meaning the material. The yeah, material in which but, was written. Yes, but remember this is before space and time. So, so this is, a, is no so, so there is so there is a, but they still call it a tablet. No, you 
Okay. So it's, it's very confusing what that is, but it's some space and time. That's, that's a different thing. Got outside of space. No, no, no. And time. Wait, wait, so, so what's a tablet then? What's a tablet? Sorry. What's a what's tablet? tablet? If it's, it's not, if it's not in space and time. It, it, it doesn't have to be. So a tablet is something. It's a bit like Alice's hands. You don't know what they are, right? Yeah, it's, yeah you are. So you don't know. It's, it's difficult. It's very difficult to understand this. If you don't, you don't have to understand. I'm in the space. So do you have no problem with Trinity then? I have a problem. <laughs> See, you see, my friend, when, when Muslims say they get told about Trinity, they say it's all so complicated, makes no sense. But then when you ask them to explain their own Akita, all of a sudden it's, oh, by a Keith, I don't know, I don't know these things, only Allah knows. You understand how to us, it seems to be So if you're honest and you say, I don't know, then fair enough. But also give Christians the benefit of the doubt that, likewise with their Trinity. Look, the Trinity, the Trinity is not, uh, is not, uh, is not. I don't see, I don't, I don't deem it wrong because it's logical, even though it could be. Uh, you have to prove because, it, as well, right? because so it contradicts. How does it contradict? It contradicts the uh, well, unity. No, not just yeah. It contradicts the Quran one, and also, so for example, yes, but the Quran contradicts the Quran. No, the Quran says it's a clear book. We'll go through that later, but no. I can show you one verse the Quran contradicts. We we'll start about the Gospels. And all right then. All right then. I'll go there later. Let's keep yeah. with the Gospels. All right. Yeah, so for example, if Jesus is God's word, uh -huh. then the, if Jesus part, is God's word, is, is the part, is the, the, the okay, word. so words is is, um, is logos in Greek. Is the word the of logic? The part, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's the so very it's rationale, the reason. It, it, it's it's a type of language to describe a unique relationship. You can say it's the and thought, right? It's the thought yeah, of you God. can say it that way because it's it's we find this in John one, yeah, John one one, John's yeah. prologue. And when we read that, it says, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God." Right? Yeah. And then in one fourteen, it says, "And the Word became flesh." And this is talking about Jesus. Yeah. And this is where we have the understanding of the incarnation. So this is a probably proper, sorry, properly biblical thing. We get this from the Bible directly that Christ incarnates, that God becomes in a meaningful way flesh and spirit. Do you understand? Well, well, yeah, well, that's the red color. And I'm going to question you. Sure. All the creation was in, in that verse, in the beginning was the word. Yeah. The creation was already mm, the angel. No. So, in that moment, yeah. Yeah. everything became. Yes. In that moment. Yes. Uh, angels, so, entities, principalities, Yes, yes, it, it, go, it goes on. So that's uh, John 1, and then I think it's either John 1, 2 or 1, 3. It specifically goes on to say, and everything came in from them. So let, before let that, that was nothing. Only, so before, only, only the, the Word of God. Yes, only the Father so, uh, and the Son and the Spirit. Only yes. the, the, the thinking of God Let me, let me find this. Find only the thought. Yeah. John 1, 1. Right, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, all things, so as you said. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. And then if we go on to read da -da -da, to 14, it will talk about the incarnation. So here we go. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So this is where we have the, like, a very foundational text to Trinitarian belief. We find it here. So you, you can say in the beginning was the mind of God? You can say that? Yeah, yeah. In the beginning the was the mind, the mind of God? Mm -hmm. Mind of word. The mind? What mind is the same? It's not the same. Does Allah have a mind? He, he has a wisdom. He has, he has, he has, a, has a mind though. I don't know, as a mind, as a mind. He's mindless. Not as, well, I'm asking a Well, I mean, he, he has a mind. one thing I always yeah. think about is... So, I don't know what you mean by your mind. Like mind is the, 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 the faculty of thinking. I don't well, because I'm not sure we can say God thinks, but maybe God has a wisdom, God has... You see, you see, we, we, well, first of all, we have it revealed in Revelation that God is spirit, but he is also uh, a mind, someone of whom has his own judgments, has his own understandings, right? Yeah. And he's the authoritative one because it comes from God, yes? But yeah. for you, you're confined by the 99 attributes. What you can say and reason about God is very limited. No, it's not. It is, How is it limited? How is it okay, uh, do you know Athali Akira? Do you know Ashali Akira? Really are, are, they, are they really big on philosophy? Are they like, yeah, do you know what Shamsi says in the corner? Is he really big on philosophy? I'm not sure. Uh, okay, no, no, he doesn't. So Shamsi so. is like, no, don't use philosophy. Don't use the Kalam cosmological argument. Don't use the first cause argument for the existence of God. That's, that's bad. Why is it bad? Because it's not in our deen. They say that when you make an argument to an atheist about God, 
about Allah only use what is in the Quran and the Sunnah. Why? Because that is their faith. That is what the Sahabi uh, perspective is. Yeah. And they are, I think, uh, my understanding is they would call themselves uh, Athiri. They follow the Athiri creed. Even the Ashuri creed doesn't deviate from that and still says, wait, wait, wait. We cannot say there is anything more than revelation. So what Allah has revealed, we accept. And anything that isn't yeah. revelation, we, d we don't say anything on because we don't yeah, know. Because, because, because you cannot say on God something that you don't know. But we can reason about God. Yeah, we can reason. So, so, so we cannot, would say, well, let me we give you an example. say this definitely is the case. Okay, just God of nature. Case, because we are made in the image yeah, of God. Yeah, we are made in the image of God. So, so we can reason. There so, is a parallel. So you, you are capable of love, yeah? You're capable of love. Yeah. God also. God must also be capable of love then. Otherwise, where on earth did it come from? Where did what? Where did love come from? He created God. Maybe right, okay, okay, so he must also be love. He must be love, otherwise how on earth... Where does it come from? Where does it originate from? Yeah, we, well also we have... We, we, we have where does mercy come from? From, from God. It comes from God, right? Yeah, it's an attribute yeah. of God. Yeah. Right, so we surely love that, that must also... Well. So is, is God loving? Yeah. Okay, so he must be love. He's not love, he's loving. So there's something separate no, from he God. he is love. The Bible no, says he is love. He is love. Did God create love? I'm not, no, I don't think so. Okay, so he must be loved then, mustn't he? He's not love, he's loving. No, it's not the, same thing. the Bible says he's not loving. Come on, he's guys, saying, do you see how not. this is difficult, right? No, no. Right. No, we can say difficult. that God is love, and we can say that's an inherent part of his nature. We have no problem with that. It's yeah, it's, it's a character, character right? It's character, have, absolutely. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have right, with but you see, when you... Okay, because well. if God wasn't loving before he made creation, then that means there was a time when God was not loving, which is, which is obscene, right? I hope you would agree with that. Yeah. Right, okay, so he must have been loving. Yeah. Okay, now you don't believe in multiple gods, right? No. Right, so that love must be a part of his inherent nature or yeah. character. Yeah. Because if it isn't, then there are two things. Allah and this thing called love that Allah refers yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, I said yes. Yeah, so okay, so Allah is love. He's well, there's a difference. You can't say no, no. it because your religion doesn't no, no. permit you to say there's, it. There's, there's, this is good material, man. Affirm me here. <laughs> there is a difference between right. saying that God is love and between saying that God is loving. It's the same thing. How can you be loving? Testament. How can you be loving without uh, being loved? He's what's not it? love himself. He, he, no, he, what do you he, mean? He, what, does he, it, what does that even mean? God is love. Right. When, when, when I when I act loving, it's because in my nature I have in some aspect of love. Yeah, God within his nature has love. So he does. So he does. He does have a nature. Thank you. Can God act outside of his nature? Okay. You said God is love. Let's they all yes. see, read the Old Testament because yeah. we believe that the Old Testament and the Quran, God behavior is the same. I'm going to show you proof here. Sure. Genesis 19:24. Then the Lord rained down oh. burning sulfur on Sodom and Gomorrah yep. from the Lord out of the heaven. That's a trinitarian uh, verse. That's, that's interesting. And the entire plane. Because the Yahweh is all mentioned in two ways. Right. In the city yeah. and also the visitation in the land. Yeah. But Lucas' wife, also another one. Lucas' wife looked back and she become a pillar of soul. Yes. And what That's happened? from the she, yes. she was disobedient, but that's so, why she became. Yeah, he told her, not, do not turn back. But, yeah. but the yeah. Lord yeah. told her, the yeah. Lord told her, yeah. and she was disobedient. Yeah. yeah. So, so she, she suffered the, 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 yeah. the, 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 the punishment yeah. to be disobedient. Well, my friend, my so friend. here, sometimes God is love and also no, God no, can no. be a what, be, let, strong punishment. Let, let, what, are they, are they yeah. opposite? Are they you opposite? don't punish your kids. You God cannot be only love. You don't punish your kids when they do something wrong? Yeah, but that doesn't mean punishment. you don't love them. She just looked in the back and I she became a But it's God, God, man. Another can, can I, I, well, like, can now, I, okay, another, I have many. Uh, uh, we, we know, we know, I'm not, I'm we know saying, these verses. Can I'm I, can not I saying address? these things are wrong. I'm saying I, this I know, is God. But can I, can I, can I give an explanation? It's the same God. Can I, can I give an explanation? Okay. So, so when we have children, yes. We know full well that we sometimes have to discipline our children. Do you understand, right? But we do so in a way that is loving. We might do something that seems harsh, especially to the child, because the child has a limited understanding. They don't understand what we're doing. We would say that God, as a loving God, can act in a way that is just and merciful. And sometimes that will appear as being very blunt, very sharp and very difficult. But we know that he is doing it with full knowledge of all things. So he knows what would happen if he didn't, and what would happen if he does. So that mean God is not no. only love. No, I, I, I do agree that he is. He's just. He's just as well. Love, yes. You are correct. He only provides love. You are correct. You are correct. But God is love and, 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 and just love. and mercy. Yes, but absolutely. But in Islam, what does that even mean? What does that even mean? Like, does that mean that love is a separate thing and he is love? What does that even mean? No, it's a, it, I guess you would say it's a characteristic or an attribute. Yeah, so, so I have no problem with, like I keep saying, 
in the Bible, 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 in the Thank you. Does. Thank you. Can God go against his nature? In Egypt, can I'm not sure. Okay. Like he, he so will, will not go against his nature. If you look, not say if you, do you know who? Um, do you know who? Uh, Ashiri is Al Al Ashiri. Oh, what's his name? You have. Um, you can play with God. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Huh? He killed all the. No, no, no. Uh, you know, you know, you have different creeds, yeah. Asari creed, Ashali creed. You know, Ashiri was Al Ashiri. Yeah, yeah. I'm not versed. Right. Okay. So he he would tell you that Allah does not have a nature. Okay, this is this is amazing now. I love this. Right, okay, this no, is no, right, this is not my opinion. I'm, right, right, but, but my point. But my point is, is that this is one of this is like one of the most greatest shakes in Islam, and you're saying, oh, he's wrong. You, you don't have the luxury to do that. Okay, you cannot go to Athali, Ashali, and um, Madudi. I get Kira and be like, yeah, they're all wrong, because then you're not a Muslim. Okay. According to the Dean of Islam. Give me a sec. Give me a sec. I'll take that back. Okay. 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 okay cool. That would be me, like me I saying, yeah, I'm a Christian, but I don't I accept I'm Catholicism, Protestant, and, and, uh, Orthodox, are all wrong. I'd be like, well, why are you a Christian? How are you a Christian? No, no, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure that God having a nature is not an Islamic thing. It's, it's not an Islamic thing to say. Yeah. No, you can't I, say I, God has a nature. It's an Islamic thing to say that God has a nature. No, it's not. God, the the earliest scholars said God does not have a nature, and the reason why, and they, they disagree with the Christians here, because the Christians and Jews understood through philosophy, Greek philosophy for example, that God must have a nature, otherwise you end up with absurdities. But Muslims were worried that if you gave God a nature, it means that he is limited in some sense because he cannot act outside of that nature, and therefore he cannot be omnipotent, he cannot be the most powerful being. That was the Muslim position at the time. So what I'm going to say to you is this. As a Muslim, as a as a Sunni Orthodox Muslim, you have to hold to this belief. Does God have a nature? Sure. Does Allah have a nature? Well he he does God uh, have a nature? Nature? Yeah. Yeah, lobby, lobby, judge. <laughs> from, from the Quran or from the Bible? From the Quran, from the, the Bible have a nature. Yeah. Like who he is. Yeah. Yeah. Like like he he is defined by a nature. He has to be this thing. I think oh, that's no, his no. Need to go check yeah, that's his right. guy, right? He's guy, right? Well, well the, Christ, the Christians would say God has yeah. to have a nature because if he doesn't have a nature, then he can be anything, which means that Allah could be good or Allah could be bad. Do you understand? No, but the Allah could be God loving, Allah could be not loving. Okay, we but the Bible examples. says that God, God, is good. God is good. God does have a nature. And God is bound by the nature because we don't believe there's anything wrong with God being the greatest conceivable being that is all of the best of the goodest qualities. For example, love. He is the best of love. Of course. He's right. He is the best of justice, the best of mercy. You know that's and, he is, and he cannot be otherwise. But in Islam, they don't make that claim. Not in, not in Sunni Islam, because in Sunni Islam, they would say, no, Allah is will. He has a will and whatever Allah wills is true. So if Allah wills no. that, that you should what be you loving, exactly then it should be true. We have the same thing in the Quran. What you can you show me? Can you show me, my friends? I would love to see this. Because I, I can quote you early scholars of Islam that the very Akida is based off and they don't have this view. You can Google it. Google Ashali Akida and look at what they say. I mean, the question you're asking me is difficult to that's fine, that's fine, go and look I, for it and yeah, find yeah. it. But in the Islamic histories, when you look back at the deen, at the earliest points of, of just after Muhammad died, they clearly had issues with the Mutazilites, who said the Quran was created, who says that the attributes should be understood symbolically. You see one of them? Yeah, so that's example, the Mutazilites. The Mutazilites yeah. are Quran in that time, yeah? Yeah, well, and yeah. they killed all of them. They killed all of them, yeah. And then after Mutazilites, you had Ashali, and you had, and you had uh, Hanbali, right? Hanbal is the first one who said that God's hand is an attribute. Why are you? Are you uh, yeah, and Ashari yeah. would have agreed with that. For the most part, yeah. <laughs> but he, knows, he knows the problems in this, you know. He is. Uh, so, for example, when I, I'm going to come back to the contradictions of the Gospels. <laughs> okay, well, he knows no, a lot. Because that was the original discussion, but we kept deviating. Well, we talk about a lot. We talked a lot about Gospels as well, you know. I'm happy to keep continuing about it. But my point, at some point, you're going to have to really think, have I really got this right? Have I really got the right understanding here? Or have I been led down a path that isn't really true? It's what modern scholars are telling me because they know in the West it's not palatable to say certain things. It's not palatable to say that, well, Muhammad had sex with Aisha when she was nine, according to Sunni Islam, right? 
That's not possible. Muhammad yeah, did not marry no, Aisha. No, 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 that, see, months. see, he rejects it because he knows. Because there's no the way. Quran said something it's not completely different. for you. That doesn't mean it's not true. Yeah, but God said something different. What did he say? I'm gonna give you the ayah. Many ayahs. It's not true that he married her at that age. Hello at there. Age of six. Hi, this is Chris. Hi, I'm doing well. Are you? He are you still on your way here? All his life. Why would you go marry a lot of Muslims? Leave it, no. Believe him because they have really? no other what? way to. <laughs> you were next to me. Because there is hadith. Yeah, it's yeah. just about that. Hello there. Right. I'm so sorry about that. Oh, don't worry. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Hello. How's it going? It's going really good. Having some. Uh, Which of you would like to become a Christian? Not me. This guy. I'm halfway. Special <laughs> offer. Yeah, I'm going. Oh, I'm good, good. Good. Fantastico, <laughs> fantastico. That's, that's, uh, let me, um, uh, Lord willing, we'll see you become hey, no, a Christian, yeah. friends. Lord willing. It's great. It's great. Well, You've been talking with my friend here. Yeah, 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 is he no, making no, good no, sense? No, yeah, yeah. Very good. Very good. Very good. Are you a Muslim yourself? No, I'm a Muslim. You're a Christian. Oh, oh, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so let me um, so let me ask one of the questions. Me and him were researching. Sure, right? sure. Back, going back to the, uh, he mentioned the contradictions in the gospel. Sure. So stuff like um, so Mark is the earliest stated gospel. Yes. However, um, the order of the gospels in the Bible, Matthew, Matthew and Mark. Matthew, Mark. So, yep. Mm -hmm. um, Firstly, like maybe is there any reason why you think that is? Why they date that? And secondly, mm. how about the differences? Like, for instance, Mark not mentioning the virgin birth. Like, these are some of the things which maybe sure. would you sure. like some of the contradictions. Yeah, no, no. The, one thing. So, uh, not mentioning something is is not. I, I don't see that as a contradiction. However, there hey. are actual contradictions. Okay. What are the actual contradictions? No, can you just? Yeah. Oh, so sorry, 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 sorry. You can do. Okay, yeah. go on. Mention say then we'll answer all of it. All right. Cool. We'll match all of it. So what I said about Mark, and then. Okay. So do you agree that the early Christians believe that the second coming is going to be early? I believe there was definitely an opinion among some Christians that the second coming no. was going to be early. Yeah. By, by Jesus' words. As in, they heard Jesus' words and they took the interpretation that the second coming no, would come within their lifetime. There they were some said, people that said, believe that, yeah. Truly, truly, I tell you that some of you will not taste death before all of this happens. Right. Does that appear... Is the very next thing that is mentioned the transfiguration on the mount? Uh, I've seen, I've seen, in, I've seen that wonder, interpretation, but I wonder work. why. Why would because, it not work? Because, because, mm. because what it says is, before you see the kingdom of God, that's not the kingdom of God. Is the kingdom of God not when Jesus is coming and he doesn't like, repent the for the kingdom coming. of God is at hand? The second coming, according to I think, the Christian belief, is the second coming of Jesus. It's not quite the phrase he used, isn't he? He didn't say, before you see my second coming, he said, before you see the coming of the Son of Man. No, no. Before, right. before, who is the Son of Man? Before all these things take place. Take place so, from what? Okay, let me just go. You, you ever seen the passage in Daniel where it talks about the coming of the Son of Man? Yeah, see, I have a problem with that as well. But we'll take Why do you have a problem with that? <laughs> well, oh, really? I guess you would have to. It's great. Uh, I mean, that's yeah. the kind of, that I think it refutes the it. second coming. I think it, 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 it affirms the idea that the second coming was going to be doing the Roman Empire. Because you have the beast that represents the Roman Empire, and then Jesus goes. Why does it say it represents the Roman Empire? Daniel said that. Wait, does it? We know it says it, Sorry, it's about the Roman Empire. Oh, is I it think it doesn't say explicitly, is explicity? say Roman. Right. I, I was going to say, I'd be quite surprised if it did but say, it's, by but the way, it's, this but is but the, it's the Roman, Roman Empire. Empire, we know right. that. Like, all interpretations. Yeah, it doesn't use the word, does it? It, it talks about empires that are to come, yeah. we assume that it's a Roman Yeah, but we know, right. from, the, from more, the vision, like we know that Jesus is the one that's going to destroy the Roman Empire. That's literally what the... That Daniel 7 passage, it's really clear that, you know, there and then in front of Daniel, when he's having the vision, you know, it says, and then I looked and I saw one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. Mm. Yeah. And that was like, you know, this amazing vision with light and, oh my goodness, a revelation. And that's exactly what happened at the Transfiguration, straight after no, the passage what you're referring to. No. And would well, that son of man be given all kingdoms? Because he also said, sorry. And, and, uh, uh, would he be given all kingdoms and all dominions forever? He also, yeah, I he, think he was also... What do we believe about Sarah Jesus? Didn't have to he, was also, he, he also said that uh, you will not go and finish the town. And I tell you, before you finish all the towns, uh, you will die before you see death or something, like, something along those lines. You will not finish preaching around the villages, all the villages. So he makes Until what? Before you see death. Before you see death. He told them you're going to die before you finish preaching around. Can you show me a scripture? Can you show me a scripture? I would also encourage you, like, look at answers for these. Like, because. Yeah, the answers you know, that you gave me, I've seen that, but that's not right. such a so, so, so when I when I look at like so, like supposed contradictions in the Quran, I actually Google them to see what the Muslims say, because yeah, that way I well. can understand what the argument is, right? Yeah, I understand because right. uh, okay. I, I, I know the argument that it's, that that's the kingdom. However, in his clear words here it says, 
uh, what is it? Uh, truly I tell you, some of you standing here will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming right. in his kingdom. Right, well, so... That, that, the, the event that you're referring to... The Mount on the Transfiguration. Yeah, that, that's not the Kingdom of God. That's not... Well, I didn't see Kingdom of God kingdom. in Sorry? that specific moment. No? No. Why? Because it's not. That's not the Kingdom of... No. So, why... It, it, <laughs> okay, let me give you... Uh, you will not... So, this is in Matthew 10, 23. You will not finish the towers of Israel until the Son of Man comes. Okay, what about this one? Can you, let's have a look at that. Give me Matthew, the verse. Matthew 10, 23. Oh, okay. Because it's very really clear. I think Sorry, from, what's, from, what's the contradiction that you're pointing out? Here, here it says, uh, these uh, yes, kind of directly say that the second coming is going to be early, very early after Jesus' death. And it makes sense. Uh, Matthew. You heard everyone Basically, because of the, same the man who the stands from to the end will be saved. The idea. The well, because the Roman Empire was doing this. No, it doesn't mention Roman Empire, because he, he says, you will not finish the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. And he started to the disciples. When they persecute in one town, flee to the next. Truly, I tell you, you will not reach all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Well, they finished the towns and, and they actually died for natural causes. So that's either a false prophecy or something that put in his mouth. I'll have to look at the verse, I think. I think it's a short answer. 23, did you find it? No, I mean, like, sorry. I'll have to look into it, like, further look into All it right. to give an understanding well, of it. I'll give you something to look into. Yeah, yeah. Just I mean, just isn't, that, isn't that just what he said? That, you know, they didn't finish going through the villages yeah, they did finish. before the transfiguration. No, no, no. No, this is after the resurrection. Yeah, but well, we're not talking about the second coming that we talk about today. We're Wait, talking is about it? the transfiguration no, this... when the Son of Man comes. No, the transfiguration happened when Jesus was alive. Yeah, yeah. This is after the resurrection. But Wait. Where does it say that? Wait, it is says it? you will not finish the towns of Israel until the Son of Man comes. Yeah, and what No, it's not next? after the resurrection. It's not. No. Wait, in Matthew 10. Matthew there are 20... 10. What I happened think? next? There are the transfiguration 20... came Eight. next. Yeah, that's definitely not after the resurre uh, resurrection. It's prior resurrection. Well, they still finished the towns. No, not at all. He sent them. He sent them on a tour around one part of Galilee, the northern part. They'd never been down to Judea at that point, or Samaria. So there was loads left to do. No, they, they did feel okay. I mean, go, look into it a bit more. But that—that's basically it. The transfiguration, which happened you know, in a chapter or two later, when Jesus was revealed in all his glory to them. That's what he was talking about. Is, is that what? You, is that what the Son of Man coming? Is that's that, what is, it means. Is, is the transfiguration. That's what it means. No, no, so, no, what it means. If I remember correctly... In, in, answer me this like straight. Uh, is the transfiguration the kingdom of God coming? Mm. Yes or no? I, Without this in mind? Yes, in part. I mean, no, the yes kingdom no. of God is here right now. No. I mean, that's like a have you stopped beating your wife question. You know, yeah. well, it's not, because it's not, I've never started, so I can't say yes or no. Because because Matthew says in another what is passage... What the kingdom of God? Let's answer, another, that, let's so, answer so, that question. Sorry, sorry. Uh, in another, I'll come to that one. In another passage, I think Matthew, or is it, uh, I think another in another gospel, he says you'll see the, the Son of Man coming with all his power. Yep. And so that yeah. really uh, kind of refutes that it's about the transfiguration. I mean, that was pretty powerful, you know. You know with all his power. Yeah, with you know, all that delight and the, oh my goodness. Wait, wait, wait. You can see this more clearly if you look at Mark. So if you look at Mark, because I was going to say, I, I remember this being a specific thing. In Mark, the way that Mark juxtaposes it is when this is said in Mark 9, yeah. and he said to them, Truly I tell you, some of you standing here will not taste death before they see that the kingdom of God has come with power. Yeah. It immediately goes into the story of the transfiguration. I, now we know from Mark, he, he does a thing called the Markian sandwich, where he basically starts off with one story, goes to a different one, and then links it back again with the third part. He does this again with the story of the fig tree. So this is a common Markian narrative to explain what he means by that. So yes, it's related to the transfiguration. Okay, well... Now that's things. clear in Mark, not, maybe not so much in Matthew, but I don't think they contradict. That's right. You're going to tell us what the Kingdom of God is in the New Testament? Well, from, from what I think, correctly, uh, it's, it's the second coming. Yeah. What is it? I mean, yeah. God is the King. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. And so the Kingdom of God is any time, any place where God's kingship is, is there in reality. Okay, so we're here in the United Kingdom. Okay, you know, our king is King Charles. Now, you could say in that sense, well, if I'm here committing a crime, then, you know, the kingdom of Charles is not, is not actually in operation because we're breaking the laws. But if we're following the laws, if we're respecting him, then 
the kingdom is in operation. And that's basically what it's talking about. God is the king of all the universe. He's always king, but there are times we see it more clearly. You know, so when I became a Christian, the kingdom of God was there, okay? Because then I moved over from darkness to light. And when you become a Christian, you know, it'll be the same thing when you, if you take that opportunity, and it's going to be, oh my goodness, now I'm being slightly humorous with you because I know you don't think you will be, but maybe, you never know. But that would be what's happening. And then there's different times when you see it more clearly. Now, of course, at what we refer to as the second coming, when Jesus actually returns physically, oh my goodness, that's kingdom of God like on steroids. Okay, but there were other times when we saw it, the transfiguration was a really clear manifestation of the kingdom of God. Other times at Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit um, you know, made the disciples speak in different languages. So that would be a, a fairly reasonable explanation. No, no, that's not what Matthew says. Huh? The Matthew 10, 23. What, is, what do you have to say about that? Well, largely what he said. Well, my contribution to that was if you look in Ma uh, Mark 9, it's more clearly what the intent of the story was. Namely, because Mark puts the... Uh, was that verse that you quoted, and then immediately goes on to the transfiguration. I don't think. Do you I want to show Matthew you again? Is, I don't think. Yeah. Ma I, I Mark don't think, nine. I don't think Matthew is referring to the same story. Matthew, uh, you will not finish the town of Israel. I don't think it's referring to the same incident. Truly, truly, I tell you, some of you who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God has come with power. Is this Matthew? No, this is Mark nine. And then immediately oh, yeah, okay. the transfiguration. Yeah. And Jesus no. took six of them, Peter, James, and John with them. I'm saying. So there's an intent by the way that this is structured. That I'm it starts saying. with this and then it goes to transfiguration. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, uh, if you want to explain that with that, then how do you explain Matthew 23, 10, 23? Well, because I could just it's certainly start the same one. Well, I think it's just less clear. I, think no, that's it's, fair. I don't think it's the same incident. Why do you think? I don't think it's the same incident. I don't think it's the same incident. Well, you need to demonstrate that with, yeah, okay, with cool. some arguments, yeah. right? Uh, if it comes after the, rather than just yeah, you can't just say I don't think yeah, it's yeah, the sure, same sure. thing. I said, well, okay. Right about you. I also want to remind you that as a Muslim, if contradictions are the main thing for you, then you're in a much worse position as a Muslim than you are a Christian. If what? Because remember, the Quran says that. The, well, at least the Dean says that the Quran has no uh, contradictions in it, right? Yeah. Right, so it should be perfect, right? Because there is no man humanity in it, it's purely just Allah's words. Right, so if there's any issues with that, then it's game over immediately. Whereas yeah. for me, I can simply say, well, that was never the intent. We never had this view that when man was writing scripture, because obviously Paul's epistles, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they're human authors, but they're inspired through the Holy Spirit. So we believe the Spirit ensures that the message is consistent with the previous scriptures, with the prophecies, and with the intents that God wants to give his uh, pro uh, prophets to and his revelation to. But with the Quran, it's on an eternal tablet. So if there is a contradiction with it, it's game over. So, so again, you're making a standard that is really dangerous to you. For me, I can say, well, it's not the end of the world in effect, as long as the message is still the same and it's not as if you've got one gospel saying Jesus died for our sins, for our atonement, then rose again three days later, and another gospel that says Jesus went on a holiday to Ibiza. Like, that would be a serious problem for me, but we don't find that. I don't know, maybe in John. Like, <laughs> the point is, we don't, we don't have that kind of thing. Right? I found the Matthew 10 thing, by the way. We yeah. talk about that when you... When you what, what is true is not really dangerous. What do you mean? What's true what is, is true not, is not dangerous, because you said I'm, I'm applying a dangerous standard to myself. Well, I can show you it contradicts. Well, we can, we can see it later, because I don't want to deviate. <laughs> we can do, I don't want right. to deviate. Well, if, you're, if you're successful here, you don't refute Christianity. You refute perhaps an understanding of a passage of Christianity. If I show you there's a contradiction in the Quran, then the Quran cannot be the eternal word of a lot according to Islam. Yeah. Yeah, but, but, Do you understand that? Not what? I mean, he's, he's not the true. eternal word of Allah according to Islam. So, Matthew did the eternal word yeah. of Allah. Was the thing you were talking about. The Dean would say that you can't yeah. find contradictions. I'll tell you the truth, right? you'll not finish yeah. going through the, the, the Dean, the religion of Sunni Islam, yeah. would say that you cannot find a contradiction later, in Allah's Quran. Yeah, the they are. And you find So, if I did, it would be a problem. So, what happened there, Chris? Right. So that was a really nice chat with a, a really nice Muslim guy. Um, he's obviously been looking into Islam. He knows so many things about Islam, but I also think he's unaware of just how superior the gospel is as a contrast 
contrastion to Islam. The gospel is the true word of Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't come 600 years later. It doesn't come from Muhammad in a cave. It came directly from the source itself. And we were going through lots of his questions. He'd obviously like learned a lot of polemics, a lot of things that supposedly contradict. But when we got to the root of it, it doesn't really contradict at all. It's just his understanding of things. And I pointed out to him that these contradictions in Islam are a thousand times more severe more harsh, more impactful than any contradiction it could bring up in the gospel. And I was showing to him that in the Quran, one single Quran means that the Quran cannot be from God and cannot be the eternal word of Allah. And that's a dangerous position for Muslims to put themselves in. I didn't get a chance to go through a specific contradiction, but Lord willing, I will do. And Lord willing, I'll, I'll do that uh, either now or maybe some of the time the speaker's corner. Either way, God bless you all. Come with Jesus Christ. Have a lovely holy week. God bless you all. Take care. Thank you, wife, man. Thank you.